What is up, you guys? Back at you with another video, and today we're discussing the defensive line. This is episode four of our series of Miami versus the Florida Gators. Now, hold on. If you have not watched the first episodes, I'm gonna have the link up right here in the corner. Just click it over there and start from there. Once you finish it up, join us here in episode four, devaluing the defensive line. All right, great. So now that you're caught up, if you have already watched those, here it is, defensive line. The thing is with the Gators, they lost some players on defense, but not that many. They only lost actually three on the whole defensive side of the ball. But the hits that they did take were mostly all on the defensive line. They lost in Polite, he's a defensive end, kind of a slash outside linebacker, who played for the Gators and was very effective. He had eight and a half sacks and had 13 tackles for loss. 13 and a half even. So he was a dominant force that the Gators are definitely going to be missing. The other one was Jefferson. He had 20, he played in 25 games. I mean, this guy had nine and a half sacks. He was a defensive end, also kind of a hybrid, like outside linebacker that they played him. Now, and I'm sorry, guys, if I'm not staring at the camera, I'm looking at notes because I want to be looking up all the stats and let y'all know the breakdown, just the numbers, so you know exactly how they match up against each other. The other guy that they did lose was Clark, but he really had no giant significant role. He was a defensive tackle, so uh, not much to mention there. But the first guy that you want to know who is still on the Florida Gators side of the ball on the line is Schuler. Schuler is a defensive end that converted into a defensive tackle. Now, he had a really productive season. He improved a lot. He had three and a half tackles for loss and one and a half sacks. I expect them to be a very good dominant force for the Florida Gators. And their defensive side of the ball is nothing to be ashamed of. They have a very stout line. So in this breakdown position versus Miami and Florida, they're both very, very athletic dominant forces. Next guy that you want to know for the Florida Gators is Campbell. Campbell was a very solid player also. He had three and a half tackles for loss. He counted for one and a half sacks as you see there. He's going to be probably starting on the defensive line. He's going to be a very solid player for the Gators. The next guy that you're going to be wanting to know, and probably a starter also, is Zuniga. And honestly, of all the players, I'm probably mispronouncing his name, but... Uh, this guy was the most impressive to me, the most dominant guy. In fact, I think he should be the number one guy after the season if he keeps this production. He had 11 tackles for loss, six and a half sacks. He's definitely the next lineman for the Gators on the rise that is going to be really causing some issues for the Miami Hurricanes offensive line. The last guy is kind of a iffy one because for the fourth guy, he's solid and he has experience, but there's some really excellent recruits that Florida Gators have picked up on defensive line that may or may not be starting and beating Moon out for the starting job. Regardless, Moon is the guy that is probably with the experience next on the line. He had one and a half sacks, one and a half tackles for loss. But the guys that you want to know and watch out for is Chatfield. He's a linebacker that's going to be also playing that hybrid defensive end position. Uh, Langham is a defensive end. He's probably going to be actually a defensive tackle. He's bulking up in size is what they're saying. So that's the defensive side of the ball for the Florida Gators. Now Miami, there's no drop off in talent. In fact, we us Canes fans know that if there's a strong suit for the Canes coming into this season, it's definitely a defensive line. There's a reason our head line coaches are leaving year after year in defense. And it's not because we suck. It's because they're so dang productive. The NFL wants them. Alabama wants them. And we're a dominant force. It's always number one just about all the stats for defensive lines. So the first guy that's going to be returning for Miami is definitely Jonathan Garvin. He is a savage of a beast. Now, we lost Gerald Willis as a defensive tackle. Gerald Willis was quite a dominant force, and he's it's big shoes to fill, as well as Joe Jackson. Gerald Willis accounted for 59 tackles total. He had four sacks, 18 tackles for loss. 18 tackles for loss, guys. This guy was just ripping people apart. Joe Jackson, eight and a half sacks, 14 and a half tackles for loss. So big hits on the lineman front for the Miami also. But Jonathan Garvin, just as dominant before, 17 tackles for loss. Are you kidding me? You have an 18 and a 17 tackles for loss guy on the same team? Ridiculous, five and a half sacks. He actually had two fumbles recovered also in his previous year. This guy's going to be wearing the turnover chain like all the time, all the time. This guy's going to be a reeking Havoc. The Gators line better be ready. The next guy is actually a guy that's never played in Miami uniform, but is definitely going to be a huge dominant force, and I expect him to be a starter. That's Chigozi Naruka. Now, he's a defensive tackle. He played for UCLA. His stats dropped off, and that's because UCLA went from a 4-3 to a 3-4 defense. 
Big mistake, it was low production for him. It was not his style of play, not how it is. Manny Diaz defensive football is 4-3. That's why he transferred over. And I mean, this guy was quite a force in 2017. He had two sacks, eight tackles for loss, accounted for a total of 46 tackles. So I expect him to be starting defensive tackle and filling in as an experienced lineman for probably the Gerald Willis role. But there's other defensive tackles that Miami may or may not put in easily. It would be Pat Bethel. He's definitely one guy to watch out for with five tackles for loss, two sacks. But there's Neston Silvera. And he played in seven games over his first freshman year. As Canes fans know, he's a really talented dude on the rise. He may be winning out that defensive tackle position. But here's the thing with the Canes and how we play. They keep swapping players in and out to keep them fresh, keep them ferocious, keep them attacking, keep them fast, fast, fast attacking and so having a whole bunch of defensive tackles and defensive events where athleticism does not drop off is pretty darn impressive the get last guy that i want to talk about for miami on defensive line is definitely a von hill the virginia tech guy who was dismissed for a silly ridiculous thing in some argument this guy raked havoc as a defensive end five and a half sacks nine and a half tackles for loss when he had his full season this guy is going to be definitely a huge addition to the u and he's the one that has experience for sure already coming in so i expect the miami hurricanes to just be ripping apart but then they got even more guys that they can keep rotating in and in on this one, I definitely have to give the, the line to Miami. Miami definitely wins on this one on all the stats, everywhere apart, just top to bottom. That's not to say the Gators have a not impressive defensive line. Definitely top defensive line units from both teams in the country. It's going to be a huge battle the whole day in the game uh, on the line, which one produces more and more troubles for the offensive line. But Miami, I mean, just 17, 18 tackles for loss, guys. Guys are transferred in. The transfer U portal has just bulked us up with experience, with athletes that everybody wanted, and we got them. So I expect the line to be the strongest suit for Miami heading into this game and a huge factor on how they win that game. Now, the only other guy that Miami wanted to watch out for is Gregory Rousseau. He's a defensive end. He doesn't have actual stats to back up his name yet, but the whole staff was just raging about this guy. And us Canes fans are eager to see how he plays in suits in his role. This may be his breakout season. We'll see. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Comment your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed, join our fun and actual amazing college football community. I really appreciate it and ask you guys to do one thing. If you ever do any shopping on Amazon, could you do one thing for me? any of my videos you just go down there in the description click on any of these affiliate links you don't have to buy the product that's in the link but you can any product that you look up on amazon heck if you want to look miami versus florida gators see this book right here and i wanted to buy it bam if you buy it, a small percentage of revenue goes to me it helps out 100 percent of that revenue is going to go to the channel quality improvements on all levels of all sorts i'd greatly appreciate it guys thanks guys College football is a fun and crazy world. It is so tough and tight to see who's got the best athletic team, which is great when you got athletes all around. But it does not matter because at the end of the day, it's always all about the U.